you're into trucking, you're going to be in trucking, oh, about 38 minutes before you encounter your first scale, most likely. Um, and there are several different kinds of scales. And so what I really want to talk about isn't so much the fines and penalties and things that you can get in trouble for passing them, but basically how they work. And there is a scale etiquette, things you need to know before you cross a scale. So there are several different kinds of scales that you're going to go over. So we'll talk about those. I got some videos of going over some scales and hopefully this video you'll have a good idea on what you need to do to make your scale experience a whole lot more better. Yeah, more better. So now, just about every scale has a static scale and you're gonna go over it in the road. Sometimes there's plates, sometimes it's just a static scale built into the road. And then they usually have one on the off ramp to tell you which lane you're gonna go into if there's a bypass lane. But generally speaking, you have an axle scale, which just does each individual axle. You have a triple axle scale, which measures uh, the steers, the centers, the drives, and the trailer. Or you have a multi-axle, which will measure the uh, steers. It measures each individual drive axle. Illinois is big on that. And the trailer axle. But then it also, you will have um, just regular platforms. Uh, a lot, of, some of the older scales I still use just have a single platform, and uh, as you drive onto that, it'll give you a good idea. But um, the computers make up for a lot of that. So, you know, those are four of them right there. And then when you go in, like you said, like I said, you'll either run over a set of plates, or you'll go over a static scale and. Uh, as you cross in and usually you can see the plates in the ground there or you can see the outline of the static scale in the concrete as you drive over it and uh, that's you know as you uh, get there so or as you're already in the scale but what do you do before you get there if you have a pre-pass or you have lighted signs on the road What's the best way to get a green light or get a bypass? Well, there's science behind that. And I've seen enough videos on this that I'm going to kind of put it all together and share it with you. So, you know a scale's coming up. What do you do? So as you come up to this pre-pass here, you're going to see the plates in the road that we ran over. And that just weighed you. You want to hit those at speed. Here's your thing that tells you, and then you got the signs on the right telling you to bypass or go in. Now that scale that we're coming up onto is the one on I-29 in Elk Point, Nebraska. Truth be known, it's probably one of the most advanced scales I've ever seen. It's got uh, multi-platform, it's got static scales, it's got pits, it's got everything. This scale the construction of it and the capability of it makes anything you've ever seen in California look minuscule. So, back to my point. As you're coming up to the scale, you see the sign. It is very important to do several things. And the first thing is, if you can hit it at speed, you need to be constant. Your truck needs to be driving at speed at rest. Not slowing down, not speeding up. You need to hit that scale at speed. And there's a very real reason for that because these sensors in the road, these plates are calibrated so you can hit them at speed. If you hit a bump and you press down on those too hard, it will automatically, more often than not, flag the pre-pass and send you into the scale when you don't need to be. But there's also something very important also as you come up to the pre-pass sensors, the scales, and the signs. And you do not want to bunch up. One of the things I've seen people do which screws everybody up, one guy will screw up 15 trucks and that is start slowing down two miles before you see the sign. Don't slow down for the way station until you have to go in. Especially one of these. Now if you don't have the scale and you're familiar you'll know how to go in but if you slow down before you hit those plates 
and you start allowing all of the trucks that were traveling at speed to bunch up behind you, you're going to cause problems because not only did you are you going to be flagged to go in, chances are the next two or three guys are going to be flagged to go in because they started bunching up behind you. What you really want is to hit it at speed and you need 100 to 150 feet between each truck. That's why if like those guys that will come up behind you see them cut you off in front of the pre-pass, if your pre-pass doesn't go off, chances are you just got boned. So you're going to have to go into the scale. But that's one of those things. When you're coming up, you hit that static scales, you need to be at speed with enough distance between you and the guy in front of you. That way, once you're past those sensors and you can see the sign, you either need to start slowing down to go in or you can keep it at speed to go past. That's what those are there for. They're made to be hit at speed. So, well, if you gotta go in, now what? Here's where it gets tricky because this also will screw people up the next thing. So here's your first sign, your ramp speed. You're gonna see a lot of important signs here. Slow down and you're gonna be given warnings on when to go. Now, as you come in, you're gonna see signs like 35 miles an hour ahead, but you're also gonna see signs that say things like maintain 30 miles an hour or maintain a specific speed. Do not slow down to 10 miles an hour. It says maintain that speed for a reason. Now, just right here, speed limit 35, stay there. You got another sign that says maintain speed limit. Keep a 100 foot interval, that's for a reason. As we go over here, we're gonna hit a set of another set of static scales. And that's why they want you to maintain because it's calibrated for that. So we go over those and then these indicators will tell us which lane to be in, whether we bypass or whether we get weighed. Now, just like I said, when you're on the road, just like I said there, it's very important that you follow directions precisely as you're going down these lanes. Don't bunch up. You need to be doing speed until you get past that set of statics. Now, when you go in, it's going to tell you to slow down. Don't get me wrong. But the reason it says maintain 35 miles an hour is because if you get a green and you get to go out to the left of the bypass, you just keep on going. There's no slowing down. The scale is set up to work as efficiently as possible. And there's a lot of science involved. I'll tell you about some I learned in Oklahoma. With all the new CSA stuff, the scales kind of more or less share information across state lines now. It's kind of weird. It was kind of how it was explained to me. Used to be no real sharing from state to state and all that. Those days are gone. If you're imaged and you're in the computer, it, it'll pull you up. It's kind of weird how it works. But when you go across and those cameras take your pictures, by the time you hit that scale, the imaging software is incredible. It's got your truck number, it's got your uh, who you're leased to, who you're working for, it's got your DOT numbers, it's got your VIN, it knows everything about you by the time you hit that scale. All your information is there. And uh, it's just, all it is is imaging software, it's incredible stuff. And this was two years ago when they told me this, so I can only imagine now it's even better. So, by the time you hit the scale, they already know all your stuff. Now, if you get in there and you're light and you've got a really good safety re record and all that, and they you go past that second set of static scales, say that fast three times, chances are you're just going to get the bypass. So, that's why I said just maintain. But the imaging software is incredible. But, hey, you know, it knows everything about you within two seconds of hitting that scale. So... Let's hit the scale. So as you pull in, you're going to end up going through uh, the scale here like I ended up having to. And you end up with another speed limit, slow down to 15 and all that. And you have another bunch of signs. Like there'll be a sign up here when I'm getting behind this guy saying, you know, wait till the scale's clear, 15 miles an hour and all that. Yep, here's the sign up there stop here wait for us till scales clear then another one proceed now if you time it out right it's designed that you really all you have to do is stop but then if you keep going at the prescribed speed limit 
you can uh, make it. So we're going to go on to this triple axle scale here. And uh, now that he's gone, we're going to start moving forward. And here we go. So we go on to this uh, scale. It's it's actually pretty long. There's uh, Oh, there's four platforms here. They do uh, things a little different in South Dakota because of the long uh, trailers and doubles they have. But So you pull up here, you put your nose right on the end, and then you read the overhead sign, and that'll tell you everything you need to know. Now, once you get the green light, it's important to exit the scale with extreme prudence. But... Don't be a jerk bugging out there. Roll off his scale like a grown human being. When you hit the road, there's going to be more signs coming out. Yield signs, this, that, the other thing. Watch the lights, but the minute you're clear, get on out. Because there's people behind you. And truthfully, you want to be out of the scale before somebody changes their mind. But what you also don't want to do is bounce his scale. If you want to make a Waymaster mad, bounce the scale. Slam your brakes on it, bounce it, jerk it. That really makes them angry. A lot of times these scales, especially single axle ones, will have you rolling across them very slowly without stopping. Watch the lights. Nebraska has this. Uh, you'll have single axle scales and you'll move across them at th you know two, three miles an hour really slowly. And you'll see signs that say, you know, proceed across sales scale slowly and have a yellow light. Red, red pops, stop. But if the light stays yellow, just keep rolling. And uh, the last thing you want to do is make the guy mad. Because if you make him mad, you'll make him work. And if you make him work, he's going to make you work. And we all want to get out of this day without any trouble. So just a little food for the wise. I've made them mad. I, don't, I highly recommend not doing that. Now this right here is an example of more of a common style. It's Illinois. It does have the multi uh, axle on uh, for the drives, but you go in. It's got the lanes. Follow the signs precisely, and then it's going to tell you whether to bypass or not. You got your static scale right here. Boom, boom. It's going to tell you which to go over. And like a trooper, I ended up going over. Usually I get to bypass here, but this is Carlock, Illinois, and all you old school guys know how fun Carlock is. But you go in, and uh, this is a little different because not only do you have to place your nose in a certain spot, but when you move in, you stop at the stop sign, you crack your window, and you go across the scale. And you have to watch your front set of duels because right here you see two scales that uh, you got to set your duels in both of them so you pull up real slow and you split your duels and just watch your front to the end boom there you are and I get a green light here and I'm out so this is more typical of what you're going to run into and easy off the scale but once you bypass this and you're out get gone now pre-clearance units like pre-passes and stuff like that not everybody has them dirty little secret anybody can get one company drivers or uh, owner ops anybody can get one I get one through the company but truthfully I can go through pre-pass and get one myself just a transponder it's about 15 16 bucks a month it's cheap now you want to pay for it or you want the company to pay for it but a lot of times when I do get the green, it allows me to just blow the scale. And I like that. But if you want a pre-patch, you can get that. But like I said, there's a, some simple rules about scales. And uh, pre-clearance units like pre-passes make it a lot easier. So, so basically when it comes right down to it, there's just some simple rules to hitting scales. Plenty of following distance, hit it at speed, you know, now, I, I know if the speed limit's 70 and your truck's doing 65, you don't want to be on the brakes or on the gas. Basically, hit it in the most relaxed way you can make the truck go. 
let the truck settle into the speed it's at and hit it you'll have a better time so that's just something to think about like I said following distance speed uh, make sure you follow all the signs you know going into the scale out of the scale there's a lot of directions to follow and these are important because truthfully if your company has a good safety record and you have a pre-clearance unit you're gonna get green lights more often than not um, but even when you don't you can minimize the chance that you're gonna get pulled around back and thrown over a pit if uh, you know like your trucks maintained, keep your truck clean uh, have your lights working stuff like that don't give them an excuse trust me that scale and car lock I actually blew a tire going in there one time drove across the scale with a blown tire and had to pull around that was embarrassing but things happen so scale etiquette give everybody some room do what you're supposed to and everybody can move through there faster you're gonna cross the scale so make sure that you go to a CAD scale or a certified scale get a weight ticket show that your weights correct when you left with your load and just monitor it throughout I have a um, suspension load gauge and all these new trailers they have weight gauges so if you're on slip sheets or stuff like that you can actually monitor your load or if the load shifts which it's going to happen you can actually go and rescale it but the thing is make sure you're good going in and make sure you follow a few simple rules and your experiences at a weigh station are going to be a lot better they don't have to be bad these guys are doing a job you're doing a job act professional they'll be professional and truthfully you'll be in and out pretty quick so that's just some of the things I've learned about scale so hope you like this video I enjoyed making it I have never really had a real bad time at a scale well a couple times but it I brought it on myself so anyhow I appreciate it thanks for watching see you next video